Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an amazing day and thanks so much for joining me on this one. This is the first of a two-parter tutorial. The second part is gonna be shared next week, so stay tuned. But in these couple of videos, I'm gonna be sharing the must-know information and also the key exercises that I like doing in order to be able to add simplified human figures in motion into scenery artwork, so whether it's drawings or paintings of any kind of scene, where I wanna add in little figures that are walking around, sitting, standing around, doing all sorts of natural human things. In this first video, I'm gonna be starting with sharing some information about basic body proportions. I'm then going to be explaining how our weight shifts and how our center of gravity changes when we are moving around, which is super important to understand when we're trying to draw figures in motion. And I'm going to be creating these little armature sketches so that I can better explain these ideas. And finally, part three of this first video is going to be all about how to simplify the human figure into three major masses. Personally, I like simplifying it into the head, the upper body, and the legs so that you can add these figures quickly into your drawings or paintings of scenes. Stay tuned for part two because we're going to be putting it all together and we're going to be using actual reference photos as loose inspiration to sketch a variety of little figures in motion. I would highly, highly recommend working on these exercises. These are the actual exercises that have allowed me to get to a point at which I am now able to easily add in figures into my scenes, whether they are drawings or paintings. All right, so with all that said, Let's go ahead and get started with the very first part of this video in which I'm going to be explaining essential things to know about in regards to basic body proportions. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter if later on you're planning on developing high levels of abstraction or expression with your human figures or high levels of realism. You have to stem from knowing basic body proportions. So this is why I really wanted to add in this first part into this video. For this explanation, I'm going to go by the eight heads tall total body length, which is kind of the ideal body length for adult females and males that so many artists out there go by. But it is important to know that in reality, the average total height for adult females and males is more like a 7 to 7.5 uh, heads tall total body height, but this is more like an ideal and it is frequently used by lots of artists. Another thing that's important to know is that many times this is um, elongated or shortened depending on the type of artwork that the artist is creating. Oftentimes when it is more like a comic book character, like a superhero or something along those lines, the height is made even taller or body proportions are distorted or made bigger or whatever it is to make the character look stronger or to better communicate the character. Other times when it's a figure drawn for fashion purposes, those legs are elongated even more. Whatever the case may be, the idea with this is to use the height of the head from the top of the cranium to the bottom of the chin as the unit of measurement. So once you have the head drawn in, you can simply measure that total length and then go down seven times so that you have a total height of eight heads. Or you can do what I did and use a ruler to measure eight inches in total and just create little tick marks along the line of every single inch. And once you have those spaces measured out, you can go ahead and start drawing in the head and the different body parts, which is what I'm working on right now. Just keep everything very simplified and think of those wooden mannequins that you usually see in art supply stores. That's kind of what you're going for here. Now your shapes don't have to be exactly like mine. As long as they somewhat resemble that body part, you can use anything that you want, but keep everything nice and simple. Right now with this kind of study, we're not really going for shape correctness or realism. This is more so a study on human body proportions, proportions of different body parts, how different body parts relate with each other in terms of their length, their width, their location, how they compare with each other, where they are located in relation to other body parts, etc. 
That's what we're trying to understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about body proportions here. Going from top to bottom or head to feet. After the head, which takes up that entire first section, we have the shoulder line, which falls right in the middle of the next inch. So where the 1.5 inch mark would be, that's where the shoulder line is, which makes the length of the neck half an inch in my case. Going downwards from there, the next horizontal line that is important is the bottom of the rib cage and from the line that indicates the shoulder line to the line that indicates the bottom of the rib cage there is a distance of one and one fourth heads between these two lines now if you're bad at math like i am don't worry about it that's probably the hardest measurement of all just place your line for the bottom of the rib cage somewhere a little tiny bit lower than the halfway point between lines two and three and you're gonna be fine. Okay, so moving down from there, the next line is going to be the waist. And this is going to be right on line number three. And the waist aligns with the elbows. So line number three is not only the waist, but it's also the elbows. Going down from there, line number four is essentially the crotch and the wrists. So the crotch aligns with the wrists. Going down from there, we have the knees, which fall right above line number six, which is the halfway point in the lower body or the legs. And then finally, we have the ankles. And for the ankles, essentially the line that I create is the bottom third of that final section. So if you divide the bottom section, in my case, it's one inch into three parts. You make a little tick mark or a line along the bottom third, and that is where the ankles are going to be. If you're wondering about the width of the shoulders and the width of the hips, what I like going by personally is I just visualize the width of two heads side by side, and that's how wide I make the shoulders. And I use that width for the hips, or sometimes I make the hips slightly more narrow than that. It depends on whether I am drawing a female or a male, or depending on the specific body shape for the person on hand. All right, so coming back to see the entire figure as a whole, it's important that you acknowledge that the crotch is exactly in the halfway point. And if you want to see it in this way, everything above the crotch is the upper part of the body and everything below the crotch is the lower body. All right, so after having drawn this front facing figure, I'm going to go ahead and draw a sideways figure or a figure in profile right beside this one. It's important to be able to visualize what the figure would look like now that we've understood these basic body proportions from the side because these figures that we're going to be drawing and adding into scenes most likely than not they're not going to be completely flat and forwards facing they're going to be moving in all sorts of different ways so it's important to start visualizing what these proportions would look like in figures we're seeing from different perspectives from different angles that are moving in different ways Okay, so as you can see, I quickly drew that sideways figure, that figure in profile, using all of these same lines and tick marks that I added in for the front-facing figure. So it all aligns perfectly. I'm just visualizing the figure from the side. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to part two of this video in which we're going to be talking about how our weight shifts and our center of gravity changes when we are moving around in order to portray or describe movement and stay away from too much stiffness in our figures which is something that so many of us struggle with when we're first starting with figure drawing we need to understand a few key things Firstly, as I said before, rarely is a person going to stand completely straight up facing forward and is going to have her or his weight evenly distributed among the two legs or on the two legs. Usually one of our legs is holding more weight than the other, even when we're just standing around. But when we are walking, running, or even in some sitting positions or moving in any way, one of the legs is holding way more weight than the other leg. So I would highly recommend stemming from reference photos and noticing these things in real life. I would recommend asking yourself, 
which leg you feel is holding the majority of that weight. Aside from this, it's also important to notice the tilts and slants present in the shoulder line and also the hips and slash or where the crotch line is. You're probably going to notice that these lines are almost never perfectly horizontal. There is almost always going to be some degree of slant or diagonal going on there. And it's important to notice these things and capture the slant, even if it's very, very minimal, very subtle, because a lot of the times our brains are gonna tell us to just go right in and draw that shoulder line and that waistline and all these things in a completely horizontal flat way, that is likely going to lead to a stiff looking figure and it's not going to communicate that uneven weight distribution that is going on, which then leads to a drawing that fails to communicate that that figure is in motion or fails to communicate the dynamic feel that you're going for. Something that really helps me is to visualize the stretch and the pinch happening on the sides of the person's waist. If the shoulder line has a specific angle to it and the crotch line or the waistline has another angle to it, there is going to be a stretch in one side and a pinch in the other. And this can help you decipher that angle for that line. As we move around and shift and change our position, our center of gravity changes as well, because otherwise we would tip over and fall over. And this is also something that we have to pay attention to when we're drawing figures in motion, because if the center of gravity doesn't make sense, it might look like the figure might tip over and just doesn't make sense with how gravity works. Notice the major body masses, the head, the upper torso, the lower torso, and the legs. When the positions of these major masses of the body move and shift, there has to be a counterbalance created by the other parts of the body so that the person doesn't fall over. So we have to think of how the body is balancing itself because all of our different body parts have a weight to them they are being pulled down by gravity and the larger the body part, if you move that part towards one direction, then there has to be a counterbalance to that so that we don't fall over. Drawing a vertical line straight down the figure and noticing how it crosses the major masses and the legs can really help us notice if there's a balance and if the weight is distributed in a believable way. And one other thing I wanna talk about is the action line. So for me, something that helps me visualize the action line is the spine or where the spine would be in that body. I visualize the location of the spine, whether it's a sitting pose or a kneeling pose or a standing pose. And after drawing in the little shape for the head, I draw that line that symbolizes the spine. Sometimes I bring that line that I visualize for the spine all the way down the length of the leg that I visualize to be holding the majority of the person's weight, so the supporting leg. With other poses, if it is a super dynamic pose in which the person is kicking towards one side or something like that, and there is a very interesting kind of force happening coming through that leg, sometimes I pull that line through that leg. Really, there is no right or wrong. There are other poses in which the arms are outstretched upwards above the head. And in those cases, sometimes I start the flow line or the action line through that arm that is above the head and I bring it all the way down. I visualize that spine and I bring that line down all the way through the supporting leg. So it does depend on the figure on hand, what the figure is doing, but this line is an important line to visualize. By visualizing this action line, otherwise known as the flow line, you're gonna give your sketches more of a dynamic, more of a gestural look. Because there is an infinite amount of poses that a human body can have, it's essential to use references and do this kind of exercise over and over again 
because you get better at analyzing the kind of case by case scenarios that can happen and you get better at simplifying what you're seeing and understanding what you're seeing. Hopefully you've seen throughout this process, even though I'm just working on very basic wire armatures right now and these are very quick and I'm not measuring things super precisely, I am bringing in my knowledge of human body proportions, at least in a general way. And sometimes I'm even using my fingers to do measurements to at least notice that the most important lengths and widths at least make sense and are believable. So I'm noticing that the lengths from the top of the cranium to the crotch line and from the crotch line to the bottom of the feet are approximately the same, that the crotch line is almost at the halfway point of the figure, and sometimes, for example, I correct mistakes when I notice that the arms are too long, etc. If I didn't know about basic body proportions, then I wouldn't be able to correct this. I cannot recommend doing these kinds of quick armatures enough. Use photos. That's how I started. Just find yourself great reference photos with different people in different poses. And using that photo, create that little armature simplifying the different body parts into simple shapes that resemble that body part and lines and think about the weight shift the center of gravity and also the flow line that is going to help you tremendously another super super important tip is observe observe the people around you observe the people walking around you in your day-to-day -day life notice not only proportions but how limbs move how we can rotate different parts of our body in different ways all that is going to help you so much all right moving into the third and last part of today's video tutorial and in this part i'm going to be explaining how i personally like simplifying the human figure into major parts so that I can then visualize these parts as simple shapes. For me, this exercise right here is also incredibly helpful because once you do this enough, simplifying these figures that you see into blocky shapes, and they don't have to be blocky shapes, it can be any kind of shape that you want, but simplifying the figure into larger shapes. If you practice this enough, bringing to mind, of course, all of the information that I've shared with you in the past two parts of today's tutorial, you're gonna be able to more easily either draw or paint in these figures as simple shapes quickly in drawings and paintings of scenes. So all I am doing right here is um, with everything that I just shared with you in mind, I first drew in a blocky shape for the head, then I moved on to adding a blocky shape for the torso, and then what I did was I visualized uh, an envelope, and I talk about envelopes in past sketching tutorial videos. I'll make sure to link to a couple of those down below in the description box of this video in case you'd like to go and check them out and learn more about my envelope method. But essentially, that's what I'm doing. I'm imagining a blocky envelope for my head, for my torso, and for my legs. And once I have that larger blocky shape in, I add smaller shapes to that, or I subtract to that, or I break that envelope up into different parts, smaller sections. So what I mean by this is if the arms, which are limbs, they are smaller shapes when compared to the larger upper body shape or the legs, if they are outstretched or bending or folding in different ways, I add that smaller shape to the larger shape, which is the upper body shape. If the legs are spread apart because the person is walking or running or whatever it is, I create that envelope first for the two legs together and then I break that envelope up into the two separate shapes for the two legs. Smaller shapes like the little feet, like the hands, I also simplify as blocky smaller shapes that I add to the legs, right? So in other drawing tutorials, I also talk about how important it is to not only simplify, but work from general and make your way towards specifics. So that is also something that I'm doing here. I'm first adding in, establishing those major body masses. Then I either add to them, I subtract to them, or I break them apart. And then I add in the smallest shapes, the little feet, the little hands if I'm going to be adding them in, etc. This is another exercise that I would highly, highly recommend. 
and I would recommend if you're just getting started, stem from photos because that person is not going to be moving around on you and at the same time, observe the people around you. When you're ready, you can start applying these exercises with people you're seeing from life or from direct observation and work on these exercises. Really, it's gonna help so, so much. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did and if so, make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website because for a very small amount of month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated and I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible step by step. Two new exclusive full length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.